Hey, what's up Blender users? I am Jonathan from Germany, that's why I have this weird accent. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about Manta Flow's viscosity settings and then create some slime. But before we start, I want to quickly mention that I updated my thumbnail scheme. So if you see a thumbnail with my name on it, you might want to click it. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely consider doing so, because I upload a new video every Saturday, which you don't want to miss. And with all that said and done, let's get straight into the video. So, for this video, I'm using the newest build of Mantaflow, which should be the one from October 27th, because this build has some serious issues with the smoke solver, but not with a fluid one, you can just use this to follow along with this tutorial. So, to start, I'm just gonna set up a simple scene with a domain object right here, and I'm gonna scale this up by two, and also move this up by two, so it sits on our ground plane, and then I'm gonna go first into wireframe mode, and add a little sphere so we can just have an inflow object. Okay, now when I set up my domain, we can see that there are, first of all, we have to change it to liquid, that there are some viscosity presets under the diffusion tab right here. So we have honey, oil, and water. We can already see that if we choose water, the base is a lower number, which is one, and the exponent has a higher number, of six and if we change this to honey we can see the base has now a high number and the exponent a lower one so to make something like slime we essentially want to have a low exponent and a high base and to make something like water we want a lower base and a higher exponent so for this tutorial i'm just going to choose an exponent of one i had some troubles baking with an exponent of zero so don't try this this will just destroy your whole simulation and I will also choose an exponent of maybe 5. We also have the surface tension option right here and I like a surface tension of for example 4 for my slime simulations. This just gives it a little bit more of this slimy look. Okay, the real world size we can also adjust. We can see that our domain is on the longest side, 4 meters long, so we can just put in 4 meters in here, so it just simulates correctly. What I also like to do for something like slime or honey is to adjust the time scale because the default simulations are for me a little bit too fast, so I'm just going to adjust the time scale to something like 0 0.5, so the simulations are not that fast and look more like something which should be honey or slime. Okay, so then I'm just going to enable flip and now set up my emitter object. So we're going to choose flow as a type, liquid, and because I want this to be not an inflow object, I will leave the flow behavior on geometry. This means this will, on the first frame, emit a lot of fluid, which should essentially drop down to the bottom and there will be no more fluid input over the time of the simulation. To make it a little bit more interesting, I'm just gonna add some animated objects in the scene. For example, a little sphere right here, which I'm just gonna move up and then animate. For this, I'm gonna use the noise modifier. So I set a keyframe on location and then go into the X location, press N to enter the end panel and add a noise modifier. You can now see that this sphere moves on the X axis but this is a bit too fast, so I'm gonna set a higher number in the scale tab right here, and for the strength, I'm gonna set it to 1.5. So we can now see that this only moves on the x-axis, which is not what we want, we also want it to move on the y-axis, so we can just copy this modifier and paste it into our y-axis. So now it moves in this motion on the x and y-axis, but because I want it to move around, we will have to set the offset to a number which is not zero. So now this moves along pretty nice, but because I want this to be centered, I'm gonna clear out the location, move it up, and again, apply a location keyframe, and now we can see that this sphere is centered and moves around a center point. Okay, we are almost ready to start simulating, so I'm just gonna hit fluid and effector, and because this is a standard set to collision, we can just leave it right there. Now go back to the domain and we should be able to bake the data. So after the bake has finished, don't be alarmed if you don't see any flips or don't see any particles, even if you have enabled show flip. 
you just have to reload by going back to frame one and now we can see all the particles and if we play it we can see that we have a nice simulation which looks a lot slower which is essentially exactly what we want with the viscosity settings but because I only have bake to frame 25 I will bake again with a different end frame in the cache settings and we will see us once that is finished. So now we can start to see the whole simulation coming together uh, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna leave it where it is and not rebake with a higher resolution division. If this would be your final simulation I would choose around 200 for the resolution divisions which I did for the simulation in the thumbnail. But now we will have to bake the mesh so just check mesh and bake it. Okay the mesh has baked and we can really start to see our simulation coming to life but because I want to have something like slime we also need particles. For this tutorial I'm just gonna use the bubbles particles and for something like this you probably only need bubble particles because there won't be foam or spray. Maybe a little bit of these two but for this tutorial I'm just gonna use bubbles. So check bubbles and press bake particles. Okay the particles have baked and to really see them we will have to disable show flip and now we can see our bubble particles right here. So for the particles we of course need another object so I'm gonna choose an icosphere because icospheres don't have a lot of vertices so I'm just gonna choose this one and then select my domain and go into the particle settings and you can see right here the bubble particles and on the render we can choose object and then our icosphere. So now we should start to see a little icosphere right here as our bubble particles but these are a little bit too big for me and because we don't have any scale settings in our particle settings we will have to scale our icosphere. So you can start to see they get a lot smaller and this is exactly what I want so I'm just gonna leave it at this size right here. Now would also be a really good time to save our file you should have done this at the beginning of this tutorial but I forgot it so don't be like me save when you start your project okay so now we're gonna have to do the different materials first select your fluid simulation and choose under viewport display display as solid this will now not display in the viewport but if you go into rendered view you will be able to see your mesh because this mesh looks really blocky we will first shade it smooth and now it should look a lot better so for the materials I'm just gonna use a simple glass shader but because this should be slime we will use a different IOR, a different index of reflection and this index of reflection is gonna be 1.504 because this is the one we would use for honey and because honey has a equal amount of water in it we can also use this for slime. For the different particles in this simulation we can just leave them white this should also work, especially if we now select our fluid simulation, go over into the material settings and choose screen space reflection. This actually looks really cool with the white particles. So I'm just gonna leave it now where it is. Okay, and this is essentially it. This is how you create slime in Mantaflow and play around with different viscosity settings. And if you like this tutorial, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see us in the next video.